In this class, we will talk about the relationship between energy and life. And the first concept that I want that you remember, this concept is bioenergetics. That is the study of how organisms manage their energy resources. And cells are constantly in interaction with the environment. And those interactions allow them to do a lot of chemical reaction to be able to extract energy and apply that energy to perform a different type of work. So remember, when you think about a cell, I want that you think about a small chemical factory where thousands of reactions occur. And the third thing that I want that you remember is that the cells extract energy and they apply their energy to perform work. And why we study the relationship between energy and life? There are multiple reasons, but for example, this relationship is very important if we want to cure cancer. And let me show you this schematic. Here in the first stage, you see a normal tissue. In the second one, you start seeing a mutation takes place and a tumor starts growing. And in the third one, if you see the blood vessels start getting close to the tumor, and here these tumors start growing. Why? Because the tumor needs to get energy. And how it get energy? From these uh, blood vessels. So one way to stop cancer um, is to remove the, the energy sources that it has. So if we avoid that this process take place, it is possible to allow that the cancer starve and in that way it stop growing. And this is a field that is growing very fast. Here, for example, in pink, you see the metabolisms of the epithelium surrounding the cancer. And here you can see in blue the other case, the, how the metabolism change in cells that display cancer. And in, we will study this in more detail later. But the main idea that I want to tell you is that why we study the relationship between energy and life, because it has big implications to study multiple diseases, in particular, is very important to cure cancer. In this section, I'm going to talk about metabolism, and this is another concept that you need to study. And I'm going to review some topics that you study in high school, like how energy transforms and matter transform. And I'm going to talk about the laws of thermodynamics. So again, maybe for you, this will be very simple uh, because I'm just going to review some concepts. If not, go to your textbook and read it very quickly and try to, for example, look what is metabolism, what is thermodynamics, what is bioenergetic. These concepts are key to understand this chapter. Energy is the capacity to cause change. Kinetic energy is the energy associated with motion. Energy that is not kinetic is called potential energy and is energy that matter possesses because of its location or structure. Energy is neither created nor destroyed, but converted from one form to another. This property is called the conservation of energy. The bow and arrow start out with low potential energy. As the archer's arm pulls back the string, Kinetic energy from the arm's motion is converted to potential energy in the tense bowstring and arrow. When the bowstring is released, the stored potential energy is converted into the kinetic energy of the moving arrow. When the arrow hits the target, its motion ceases. If energy is neither created nor destroyed, where did the energy of the flying arrow go? Let's rewind and look at kinetic energy in more detail. When energy is converted from potential energy to kinetic energy, some of the energy can be used to do work, but some energy ends up as heat, a type of kinetic energy. Heat is the random motion of atoms and molecules. As the arrow flies through the air, heat is generated by friction between the arrow and air molecules. When the arrow strikes the target, all the energy becomes heat energy. The heat energy is rapidly transferred into the air and spreads out. Heat energy is a very disordered kind of energy. It has the highest amount of entropy, or disorder, 
of any kind of energy. Where do our muscles get energy to perform work, such as pulling back a bowstring? Our bodies use the chemical energy from food to perform work. Chemical energy is a form of potential energy. When your body breaks down food molecules, the stored potential energy from food can be converted to kinetic energy. The stored chemical energy in food is released in your muscle cells during the process of cellular respiration. Using oxygen, cellular respiration converts chemical energy from food to another form of chemical energy called ATP. Water, H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2, are byproducts of cellular respiration. The potential energy of ATP can be converted to kinetic energy. Some of the kinetic energy is used to do useful work, such as pulling back a bowstring, but the heat energy that is generated cannot be used to do work. And I just remind you, please go and look what is potential energy, and remember that potential energy is related to energy that is a store. The other type of energy that is very different is the kinetic energy that is related to movement. And in the video, they describe more type of energy. And we will study in this section the different laws of the energy transformation. And in particular, I want that you remember this concept that is thermodynamics, that is the study of energy transformations. And to explain that, in your textbooks, they show you these the hydroelectric systems. Here, this one is a closed system. And here, this is an open system. So I want that you compare this diagram with this diagram. In this diagram, in the first one, you see that the light is on. Why? Because there is movement, and as there is movement, you are performing work. However, there will be a point that there will be no more movement, the light will be off because it's a static. And this is something that is common in closed systems, that they will reach an equilibrium and you cannot perform work. On the other hand, when you have an open system like this one, you can see that there is always water falling here and there is always movement here. So the light will, the bulb, they will be always on. Mm -hmm. The light bulb will be on because you are always able to perform some work. In the case of living organisms, we are constantly interchanging materials. So we are an open system. For example, we, this dog here, you see that is going to eat this donut and it's also going to drink water and it's always breathing. So in some way, it's similar to this hydroelectric system that is getting some chemicals inside while it's also, it also has outputs. In the case of living organisms, it will be CO2 and heat. So remember, living organisms are open systems. Now we're going to talk about the laws of thermodynamics. And here in the in your textbook, they talk about the first law of thermodynamics and they show you this animal that is transforming energy, transforming the chemical energy while he eats the fish. So what they want to show you is that the first law of the thermodynamics, they talk about the conservation of energy. So the energy is not going to be created or is not going to be destroyed. It's only going to be transformed. In the second section, they will talk about the second law of thermodynamics and is that every time that there is a transformation of energy, there will be a release, an unusable part of that energy that it will be lost as heat. So this is important, loss as heat, or it could be lost as wasteless in this case the CO2 and remember when you study physics they will show you that and through every energy transformation it will increase the entropy of the universe and they will talk uh, in more detail in physics but one thing that I want that you remember is this that as we are losing every time energy as heat or waste these perpetual machines that are creating a feedback that don't allow the waste of energy. As far as science goes, as we have advanced right now, they don't exist, they are not real. They are always going to be a loss of energy. So let's recap of what we said. So we said that first, 
that during every energy transfer or transformation, some energy is unusable and is often lost as heat, as I show here, or waste in the case of the CO2. I told you that these perpetual, as a result, these perpetual machines are not real. Um, the third thing that I told you is that when you study physics, they will explain this in more detail, that the, every energy transfer or transformation will increase the entropy of the universe.